In other videos, we've talked about how random assignment is really important for experimental studies. And this is because we want to make sure that all of our groups, all of our experimental groups and our control groups are similar to each other as, as much as possible. This way we know for sure that any differences between groups are attributable to our manipulation. And because of this, whenever we do experimental studies, we always want to make sure that we have randomly assigned participants to different groups. But what if I wanted to study something like gender differences? Maybe I want to look at how the reading speeds of males and females differ. Well, it's not like I can randomly assign some students to be male or some students to be female. That's just who they are, and as the experimenter, I have absolutely no control over that. And in cases like this, when the experimenter does not have direct control over the levels of the independent variable, we say that we have a quasi-experimental design. And this is what happens when we can't just randomly put people into groups. So males versus females, five-year-olds versus eight-year-olds, but this also includes cases where it wouldn't be ethical to have random assignment. Say I wanted to look at soldiers who have had head trauma and those who haven't. People would come into the study with those conditions. I can't just get a group of soldiers and randomly give half of them brain injuries. I'm, I'm sure you would all agree that that is not ethical. And it's perfectly fine to study all of these things. We just have to acknowledge that we haven't randomly assigned people into our groups. Also, it's possible to have a study where you have both a quasi-experimental design as well as an experimental design. all within the same study. So I can have a study where I want to see, I don't know, whether people perform better on math tests if they're sitting on comfortable or uncomfortable chairs. And I'm not even really sure what my hypothesis would be, but whatever. Anyway, let's also say that we want to look at gender differences because I suspect that there might be some kind of interaction. And what do I mean by that? Well, I have my two conditions. I have my comfortable chairs and I have my uncomfortable chairs and so that's one independent variable. And then I want to look at another independent variable. So I have a second independent variable and that one's gender. And so I have males and I have females. And this is the one where I've assigned different levels. I can easily put people into a comfortable chair group or an uncomfortable chair group. But the second independent variable, this is what adds a quasi-experimental design to this experiment because clearly I can't decide who should be in the male group and who should be in the female group. And so we have two different things that we're looking at and we can look at them independently, but we can also look to see whether or not they interact with each other. So maybe I think that women will perform better on the comfortable chairs, whereas men will perform better on the uncomfortable chairs. Or maybe I think that they'd both perform the same on the comfortable chairs, but that women and men might somehow be different on the other ones. I'm not really sure where I'm going with this example, but I mostly wanted to point out that you can have both fixed and unfixed independent variables within the same study. 